Welcome to Secure Management Faculties, where your mind is key before you unlock what is seen. Secure Agent Dreyfus. As a usual standard and present time for this channel, as always, go below, hit the sell your guns tab if you have any firearms that you no longer want and you want to dispose of, hit the sell your guns link, follow the link, fill out the paperwork, send your gun out, make some extra currency, make some extra cash or funds, store in your pocket, account, wherever you see fit. Today we'll be talking about a officer corrupt story. But before we get into the story, I want to elaborate a bit about the context of the effects of law. Law is like going to the doctor's office. It's going to diagnose you with something. And in this particular case, depending on what you did, triggers certain laws in your favor or against you. Now, in the context of the story in self-defense or any situation comparably to you, it's mindful to make these choices. And as you make these choices, make them as crucially as possible as you can in these defense situations and not to over drag these situations that may have them work against you. A quick example would be You've gotten in a gunfight to defend your life. You've already put the subject down or, or the subject retreated. We've talked about this previously on the channel. And for whatever reason, you begin to gun down the subject after the engagement is over and you fail to your duty to retreat. And guess what? That opens you up for a new diagnose possibility that can work against you, even though the other person started the situation. Now, of course, you have your compassionate perceptions that may waver the context and say it was self-defense, but you don't want to rely on that context. Keep the, uh, the most generalized uh, understanding of self-defense and the laws that surround that and work your way because you're not going to understand every nook and cranny to specific diagnosis of law that, until they come to you and then you knew it existed unless you're a lawyer and it's your personal craft and profession to know these things but even if remembering every type of uh, law in its fundamental network um, could be challenging even for the greatest now to continue forward uh, to make the story uh, short we were in a vehicle. It was uh, it was approximately uh, three of us in the main store, and we were riding in one of those. Um, uh, I think they call it Inco Line, uh, but they're the old uh, Ford version conversion vans that were similar to like camper builds, if you will, uh, that were uh, predominantly proper to the in the nineties and the early two thousands or whatever, whatnot, and. The vehicle broke down, and my cousin was the head driver, or whatever, whatnot. And at the time, uh, he had some uh, engine issues, or whatever, whatnot. And usually, the the vehicle would get up and start running. So uh, we we was on standby, waiting to, to get the vehicle running. In a, um, if I remember correctly, it was sometime during winter. But uh, the whole point was. Uh, police cruiser comes up behind and I'm like yeah fine let me go out to get some assistance we all set up and ready to go now of course this was a uh, profiled stop which is 100% understood to a certain amount of context but then at the same time profiling can um, definitely lead some bad results if you're wrong uh, I peeked out the side window to the right hand side from the rear of the vehicle and I seen an officer with his gun drawn. Now for the sake of the story, the officer was African American just as I. So the context of, ra context of racism uh, is totally disbanded from this conversation. The whole point is the officer began to uh, trail to the medium open double doors that's usually in the center on the side vehicle, right? Uh, the side doors. And he begins to announce uh, vividly, get out the motherfucking car. And 
he chants it, chants it readily, and we proceed to follow the order. Now, as we get out, um, I thought it was going to be absolutely clear that, you know, this is just a vehicle on the side of the road. There's nothing going on in this vehicle. And so he points the barrel of his gun directly to the bridge of my nose. And he announced, and he says, he says, oh, shit. If you run, I'm shooting you in your tendon. You better not try to run or don't move. Now, I said that in a nice way. He said much more worse than that. But the principle was, in this situation, the only option I would have had was evasive retreat. I know this is an officer, but I also know that I, my life was threatened at that point. And it was overbearing. The point was, he wanted me to run. He insisted that I ran. And he was getting an enjoyment kick in a rush out of the fact that if I ran, what he was going to do if I took off running. And so, obviously, we all hit the ground. And this wasn't nothing like the old school gang squad or nothing like that. But uh, he had us on the ground and he started to go to work. So he started to search the vehicle shortly afterward while his partner kept an eye on us. And he found at that time some things in the front that my cousin didn't disclose to us at the time so the officer yells jackpot and it was a little baggie of marijuana and I'm being lax on it because it was a little bit bigger than little long story short that bag of marijuana didn't go in the evidence bag and his last words were, he's like, I assume this is a proper exchange for not taking you guys in and pockets it. Pockets the marijuana, I mean. Now, what's interesting at this point in time is that uh, this is before the whole legalization and all that. This was some deep insight to uh, occurrences in self-defense uh, uh, in terms of thinking strategically not with responsive violence or just simply defending in a form of aggression. For me, this was making a selective choice that made sense, right? At least at that time, I had conscious awareness to know, like, we don't want to give, what's the most simplistic reason you can come up? You don't want to give the person a reason to make the excuse to engage in that way. And so that holds true to that diagnosis you don't want to diagnose yourself into a self-defense situation that will have other situations trigger that can get you in trouble because obviously uh, that would trigger me in a category of uh, not uh, adhe adhering to uh, orders from an officer and whatever situational context, particular laws with their names and brands, they stick with that. And he would have had justification to do what he was going, going to do if that was the case. And But this was just a unique situation that was basically choreographed, if you will, to a point where if I did not adhere to my instincts, I would have been in a lot of trouble. So, the whole point is, at the end of the day, understand the story. Understand the diagnosis of what you do. Get those laws together as much as you can, the specifics, or even if you just know the generalization of it. Even if you can't remember the law in a, in a core factoring of the situation. The point is, even at your base instincts, make these choices to fight or flight and or negotiate but don't overzealous yourself into an over aspect. And I understand context matters here, but the point is at the end of the day, when you're stuck between these situations, don't diagnose yourself for something that will put you at a disadvantage to your best ability. Now, I wanna talk about channel updates real quick before I close out. Um, understand that uh, I got a lot of things coming. I want to get into firearms uh, a little bit more deeper as far as the physical use. Um, obviously, I have, obviously, I have physical activity outside of it. I'm just not 
um, portraying it on the channel as much. Uh, I know I did some uh, gun breakdown videos in the past, and also a uh, breakdown and um, explanation on the uh, Smith & Wesson MP40, but uh, soon on the channel, uh, through much more development, a lot of things can be expected to come up as far as actually uh, going out to the field and using these from the range and uh, outdoor ranges and things of this nature. Um, it's just getting some things established because I'm, I got things uh, set up in a specific way. Uh, but not to get too caught up in present time, you can expect that to increase during the channel. Uh, obviously the self-defense narratives and the transparency of the channel speaking about self-defense situations and context will continue. But more developments and more physical activities will be uh, pushed to the channel and also uh, obviously the high increase of keeping the same with the transparency and the uh, lesson plan, if you will, about certain conversations that take place in regards to self-defense. Secure management faculties where your mind is key before you unlock what is seen. Secure at your Dreyfus. Appreciate all who continue to observe my channel. I appreciate the numbers for what they are. I'm doing this totally for the aspiration of, as a reflection of me. And the observations are appreciated. If you want to comment, do so. If you don't, do not. I appreciate all who have attended and observed once again. See you on the next upload.